I'm Andrea Dean, and I'm a writer, recovering community local foods activist, and I have been on the spiritual path for about 25 years as a member of Self-Realization Fellowship, which was founded by Paramahansa Yogananda uh, here in America back in the early 1900s. Self-Realization Fellowship, or sometimes shortened to be called SRF, uh, the central teaching of the path is really about meditation. It's great to practice on your own. Of course, we have to practice on our own because in our busy lives, we can't always be lucky enough either to live near a temple or a meditation group. So we meditate on our own every day. But it's really powerful to meditate in a group. It helps you to focus inside yourself, help us, it helps to focus your attention more keenly because the environment is conducive to that. So I try to go as much as I can on a regular basis to a meditation group near me or a temple near me, but I've also found it to be incredibly beneficial if I can, preferably every year, but I don't get to go every year, but at least every couple of years, to take a more focused retreat. So when you, those retreats are usually taken in silence. So when you, you first come and get familiar with your surroundings and, and the, the accommodations are usually very simple. It's nothing opulent. It's not like going to a, a resort or a spa or something like that. You're really there more to go within. So, and the silence aspect to me is one of the absolute best things about it because I feel like so much in my life you, know, you always have to kind of put on a face. You know, people are like, oh, hi, you know, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? Blah, 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 blah. But when you go to a retreat, suddenly all that's gone and you don't have to answer those questions and you can just have time to reflect inside instead of always having to put on this face for the outside. I think everybody can benefit from quiet reflection. So even if you don't believe in God or want to use the word God, or even if you don't follow a particular religious or spiritual path or anything like that, still the opportunity to just to unplug is just huge, I think. So even if you use the time for your own quiet reflection, you know, what am I doing with my life right now? Why is this certain thing out of balance? What do I want to do next? Um, those kinds, I think those kinds of questions are really universal. You know, why did somebody pass away? Why am I suffering like this? Why does somebody in my life have to suffer like that? I mean, these are all things that we all go through, whether you're on a spiritual path or not, because that's just life. So the advantage to being able to go to a retreat center, um, and if it's non-denominational, of course, that is the most comfortable thing for somebody who doesn't ascribe to a particular path and to be able to just have that quiet time for that, that reflection to allow your own inner wisdom to come out. When you come together in the temples, you, it's, you're not segregated. When you're in the, the worship spaces, the meditation spaces, the meals, you're not segregated by men and women. And our retreats are not segregated in any way by men and women. But um, you, don't, you don't sleep together. So if you come as a husband and wife, you would take separate rooms. 
and I don't think that's a moralistic judgment or anything. Um, I think it's just, uh, again, just to be able to get some of that, that separate space for yourself. The way that I serve my spiritual path of Self-Realization Fellowship is I've been uh, one of the people in my meditation circle for many years that helps. We, we're a small meditation group, so we each take turns once a month setting up our meditation service and, and leading it. So the way that I've been serving the path has been by helping to set up service and do a reading and leading a chant and then helping to, to break it all down. So that's one of the ways that I serve. The other way that I serve is by making financial contributions whenever I can. And it's, and it's not a lot. I give 25 here, 50 there. So, so just a little bit. I think that service always directly benefits the giver. So when you're serving a spiritual path or or even as a volunteer for any any kind of uh, organization for community benefit you may start out thinking oh I'm doing this because oh I'm such a good person I'm going to serve this cause but in actuality you're the one that gets served that that the benefit of the service comes back to you in some way and I know that sounds a little woo-woo airy-fairy but but that's always been my experience and it may it may be a connection that you make or or just that you feel good by giving and actually studies have shown that people who volunteer more <laughs> and who give more of themselves are happier people because they're they're doing something that's um, beneficial for others and takes them out of this like you know intense uh, self-referential loop that a lot of us get into where we get unhappy we get in these unhappy loops we're like me 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 poor me poor me poor me but then when you give and you do service you you come out of that loop and it's actually really satisfying I notice in myself I don't exactly uh, first I'll answer it that I don't exactly know why, but I see an impulse. Like sometimes when I see, um, like for example, I see a, a Sikh person who's wearing white and, and a turban, uh, or I might see a priest or a monk or a nun, and it could be almost from any, any spiritual path. And I see a person like that dressed in the garb of renunciation of that that clearly says i am a person on a spiritual path and i'm letting the whole world know because of what they're wearing when i see someone like that my heart and my whole being just goes like ah oh, like i want that <laughs> and so i just i feel this inner this deep inner yearning towards wanting to devote myself to a singular path of of spirituality so it's just this pull that i have like where does it come from it's harder for me to say um, but let me answer your question in another little bit of a different way that i notice for myself that when i do meditate and i'm not perfect at it <laughs> i'm not perfect at doing it and i'm not perfect at being consistent at it but when I do meditate and I am more consistent and I can actually calm my mind to the point where I have even just a moment of stillness in my brain where my brain stops and I feel that just that little bit of peace, there's, it feels like my whole life works better <laughs> that things just go smoother i don't get as flustered or thrown off my game during the day if something doesn't go like i want it to maybe synchronicity in my life will start to occur i'll meet someone or um or i'm where i need to be at a certain time and then 
something cool happens. So, so there's a certain kind of a cosmic flow or more like I'm surfing the wave of life instead of being tossed around in the turbulent seas that occurs if if I'm meditating and if I'm more tuned in to to my spiritual path. So so that's that's a big part of why I do it also is to be able to just be more effective in my daily life. And then the third <laughs> reason is because I do have a belief in in reincarnation and in that our that our souls continue on this this wheel of of multiple births and that through through meditation we can step step out and step off of uh, that off of that wheel of continued rebirth and so it feels to me like the ultimate human endeavor to be able to for myself to be able to evolve myself spiritually to the best of my ability uh, so if I come back in another incarnation, <laughs> I'm that much further ahead, <laughs> or maybe ultimately not to reincarnate again and again, but to, to evolve to another plane of existence. That's a funny story. So, um, I, I moved to Maui when I was in my early 20s and I was trying to get away from doing drugs basically because all through my, my teens and my 20s I was just party, 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 party and, and I just realized, all right, I got to stop doing this or I'm just going to die, like this just has to end and so I I left where I was, I left my boyfriend, I left my friends, I left, I even left my car, and I just left. <laughs> I went to Maui, just backpack on my back. I don't even know why I went there, but I just was trying to save my life. And and then I embarked on on a journey to cleanse myself, and I was cleansing my body, and and then I met uh, I was just walking down the beach. And this guy goes, oh, hey, you know, just trying to pick me up or something. I was like, oh, hey. And, and he's like, hey, we're having a party tonight. You want to come? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I went to this party. And, um, and then uh, at some point during the party, we were back by this big bonfire. And it was full moon. And, and this friend was regaling me with all of these tales of Sai Baba and Indian saints and, and I didn't even know what he was talking about. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, he says, you want to read an affirmation? And I didn't even know what an affirmation was. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll read an affirmation. And he pulls this little book from his back pocket. It's called Metaphysical Meditations, which is a book of affirmations by Paramahansa Yogananda. And he goes, just open it up and read anything. And I opened it up and I read this affirmation. And it was about the healing of the body. And, and it just, boom, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. It, it was, the words were just exactly what I needed at that moment. And so, um, so my friend who was kind of like this weird cross between like an Af a white African drummer and a Bible salesman was like, oh, well, let me give you some books. And I was young and impressionable, and I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> and so he gave me this book called The Divine Romance, which is a compilation of talks by Paramahansa Yogananda. And I took it home, and I just started reading it. And it was like every question I ever had in my life that never got answered in my, my religious upbringing of my youth, which was Roman Catholic and then Lutheran, which I always was really rebelling and resisting against. It just didn't resonate with me. And I had all these questions, you know, what is God? And, and all kinds of questions. And, and this book by Yogananda just answered all my questions. And, and that's what really attracted me to the path. I felt like, oh, 
finally answers to my questions and um, the way the world view and the way that Yogananda talked about God was a way that I could relate to, something that I always felt and thought in my own heart and mind, but could never put into words. So that I felt really attracted to that. And then I rode away and I got the lessons. And I did the lessons for about a year. And that's, you do the lessons for a year. And then I decided to continue and, and uh, receive Kriya Yoga. And at that point, you formally accept Yogananda and the line of gurus, self realization Fellowship gurus, as your gurus. And, uh, and you uh, just make kind of a deeper um, commitment to the path. And so I did that um, pretty much right away. I just knew that it was the right thing for me. And it's just continued to serve me and make my life better and better. And, and even though... Uh, like I said, I'm not great at it. I'm not like the perfect spiritual devotee by any means. But like we say on our path, it's like whenever I, whenever I fall, I find myself caught in Divine Mother's lap. Like it's just, it's always there for me. And, and, it, and, it, comes, and it comes to me in various ways, in various times of crisis, all of a sudden, just boom, there's Yogananda Bite. And I don't mean like in a flash of light. I mean like I'll pick up a book or, uh, or a teaching will, will come to me and, and it's exactly what I needed to know in order to you know, be able to get myself out of whatever situation I'm in.